An Odd Boy, Volume 1, Chapter 1, Part 3. The Trevelyans were vegetarian. My father, therefore, regarded them as cranks. I remember summoning up the courage to tell Alice's parents that they needn't be worried about her. I will be vegetarian when we're married. I'd be vegetarian now, but my father wouldn't let me. They thought that was sweet, but accepted my statement with all due seriousness. It was marvellous to be taken seriously in such matters by adults, as I wasn't used to my ideas having any value at home. My mother always listened to me seriously, but only when my father was out of earshot. The Trevelyans were cranks? No, that didn't fit my notions of reality at all. They had a far bigger house than ours and a huge garden with enormous trees. They had a slide projector and a film projector. They showed us Laurel and Hardy films on rainy days. I was amazed you could actually have your own films. I watched the reels a lot at first because I was fascinated by the way the separate frames all had a small picture on them. Mr Trevelyan told me how it worked and I thought it was brilliant. I thought I'd like to make films when I grew up. I'd make films about people wearing astonishing clothes. They'd have adventures in the mountains, riding horses and sleeping in huge tents. They'd have tigers as pets. The Trevelyan's house had red carpets with large blue, green and yellow patterns almost in every room. I think they must have been Axminster Turkey pattern, the kind of Persian carpet design that you see in hotels. They had an attic too. I loved the attic especially because it seemed like the kind of place where magic could happen. There were windows in the roof and if we stood on chairs we could look out of those windows and see for miles around. Part of the attic was a storeroom where skis and such things were kept and the other part was an extra playroom where Alice's larger toys were kept. There were masses of books everywhere in almost every room. They had a huge kitchen with a dining table in it. These were the people my father considered to be cranks. No, that was not how it was, even to a five-year-old gremlin. They went on skiing holidays and showed me slides of Alice on skis. I thought it was fantastically clever of Alice to ski. I couldn't even roller skate. I'd fall over every time I let go of the drain pipe because my sense of balance was so poor. No one knew that I had bimonocular vision and so my failure to balance was seen as a sign of stupidity, laziness and some kind of willfulness. My failure to accomplish anything was always read as evidence of my wish to annoy my father. The Trevelyans had been to America and to all kinds of exotic places. They managed to eat ice cream far more often than we did. We only had it on Sundays as a special treat and then only near Politan rather than the actual Politan ice cream Alice ate. Ice cream at her house always tasted better so I could tell. The Trevelyans were cheerful, easy-going people and they were affectionate toward each other. 
I never heard irritation or acrimony in that house and could not help but make comparisons. There was a tree house that Alice and I climbed into. We watched the birds landing in the branches. They'd land quite near us if we sat quietly and if we did not move. I had a custom of sitting quietly and not moving and told Alice about it. I told her that it was my invention, but that my father didn't like it. Alice asked why, and I replied, because it's not what proper boys do. Alice frowned. I think that's very, very stupid. Then she asked me to explain my invention. If you sit really still and quietly, the colour of the world starts changing. I told her that the colours became what they really were. Alice said, that's really interesting. I'd like to try it. She found it more difficult than I found it because she felt more need to move. But she sat still as long as she could and agreed that colours did change. The sounds change as well, Alice said. I told her that I hadn't noticed the sounds. Alice was extremely pleased that she had discovered this. It was now something that we shared. It was her invention as well. She told her parents about it and they thought it was an interesting thing to do. They thought it was highly artistic and said that we would be able to paint the colours we saw and try to make music from the sounds we heard. We spent hours up in that treehouse. It seemed like some other world completely. The Trevelyans didn't believe in God, a fact I found fantastically liberating. It seemed to me that everything concerned with God involved not enjoying yourself. It required you to obey all sorts of rules that made no sense. I remember disgracing myself in church on Sunday at the age of four. It was probably the same day that I discovered there were no Cossacks in attendance. After a dreary, incomprehensible sermon that seemed to have lasted most of the day, I shouted out, Hooray! I was packed off to Sunday school after that. It fortunately didn't last long because my parents were advised that it might be better were I not to return. I was temperamentally unsuited. No, it was not naughtiness. It was merely my mien. I was a weirdo even then. I had odd questions. I liked the church windows. Could we learn how to make stained glass windows? No. Could I learn to play the organ? No. Were there photographs of heaven? No. Where exactly was hell? That is not a sensible question. Why did God make the devil if the devil is a bad thing? Please take your child away. There was a period every summer when the Trevelyans went on holiday and I would miss Alice during that period. They once mentioned the idea of taking me along with them but my father was offended by the idea. It was disappointing 
not to be able to go on holiday with Alice, especially as it would not have cost anything. I think my father saw it as charity or something, and he was not going to be seen in that light. He said that our family could afford its own holidays and had no concept that it was simply a question of my spending time with my friend. We did have holidays as a family and I enjoyed them. We went to Cadgeworth in Cornwall and my brother Graham and I played all day long in the rocky cove there. I suggested to my mother that maybe Alice could come with us in return for my going on holiday with the Trevelyans, but my father did not think it was a good idea. He did not want me comparing holidays and finding our holidays inferior. Looking back, I feel sorry for my father. He was always in a position of artificial poverty because of the alimony he had to pay to his former wife. It must have weighed on him terribly and any sense in which he was regarded as wanting as the family provider stuck in his craw. My mother tried to explain this but her explanations never made sense to me. I therefore tended to see my father's decisions as arbitrary and capricious. She sometimes tried to reason with him, but this approach often ended in a row. I feared the rows so much that I stopped asking my mother to say anything at all on my behalf. I just let go of any hope that Alice and I would ever have a holiday together. The odd boy was not keen on summers, nor the heat that accompanied them. One summer it became extremely hot and the Trevelyans sprayed us with a hose. Alice, Bethany, Gillian and I had been grateful for the delicious cool spray of water. It was a delightful occasion and we jumped about blissfully taking turns in front of the water jet. There was a mist of water in the air and we started seeing rainbows in the mist when the sun was behind our backs. It was a splendid time but one that came to an unhappy conclusion. My father discovered that swimming costumes had not been worn and all hell broke loose. He made some horrible great noise about it, wrote the Trevelyans a letter about impropriety, indecency, shamelessness and sin. I felt extremely embarrassed and sad about that awful letter. I knew what was in it because I was made to sit down and listen to it. This was supposed to make me feel suitably ashamed, but it had the opposite effect. It simply convinced me that my father was insane. God had probably made him insane. It was not surprising. God would make anyone insane. He was a jealous God. That's what it said in the Bible. He commanded people to worship no other gods but him. I thought that was silly. It was like telling people that they were not allowed to have other friends and that you were the only friend they could have. It took me a decade to discover that the God of the Victorians had very little to do with Jesus or with Christianity as it's understood by those who don't distort it with their own agendas. All I knew at the age of six 
was that whenever God came into the picture, there was trouble and punishment descended on me. God loomed large everywhere I went, apart from the Trevelyan's house. After the dreadful letter, I felt that the Trevelyans would now dislike me and not wish me to be Alice's friend. My marriage was over before it started. The wedding would never happen. I was utterly miserable. I met Alice's mother in Wayflood Woods one day and she asked me why I hadn't visited for a week. I told her that I thought she would not want me to come again after my father's letter. I said that I'd heard what was in the letter. It was a bad letter and I was horribly upset that he sent it. It was a bad thing my father had done and I was ashamed of him. She said my father was probably just concerned about me and that people had different ideas about life. I said that I didn't like his ideas about life at all and that I wasn't going to grow up to be like him. I was worried in case they wouldn't allow me to marry Alice. I thought they wouldn't want her marrying someone with a father like mine. Mrs Trevelyan sidestepped my last comment and told me that I was always welcome at their house. She asked, however, whether my father had actually forbidden me to visit. I replied that he'd been very angry. I thought that he might have forbade me, but I didn't really know. I was confused about it all. With all the upset and raised voices, I couldn't remember what had been said. In some ways, I didn't even understand what it was all about. A day or two later, my mother told me that I could go to see Alice, just not to tell my father. The mothers had obviously parlayed the situation. Alice had been extremely upset and was exceedingly happy to see me again. She said, Bethany and Gillian's parents didn't send us a letter. That proves your father's mad. I agreed. It's God. He makes everyone mad, if they believe in him. I'm glad your parents don't believe in God. As far as my father knew, I was playing in the woods. It took me ten minutes longer to get to the Trevelyan's house via the woods, but it served to cover my trail. Things returned to normal, and I played with Alice as often as before. I just made no mention of it at home. We often spent time drawing and Mrs Trevelyan showed us how to make collages out of old magazines. I loved collage. It seemed an ingenious way of making pictures that enabled you to supersede your own drawing skills. It was fabulous working with Alice because we were always helping each other. We'd always interrupt our own work to help the other find the right picture from which to cut the next part of the collage.